Hi team, welcome to week five of a public discourse. Congratulations on being done with your informative speeches. Uh, that is the first big milestone of this class. And from now on, it's pretty much rinse and repeat. We'll have two weeks of class, another big speech, two weeks of class, another big speech, and you're done. Uh, the foundations for speech making are already there. So in the next half of the quarter, we're going to be focusing on how to improve on things like your delivery, your style, how to nitpick and polish things that you're already doing in your speeches, but need a little improvement, and specifically, um, how to adapt to the genre constraints of storytelling and persuasive speaking. So today, I'm going to be talking about three things. First, uh, your informative speeches and things that I want you to improve on. Second, style, which was your readings for this class. And finally, storytelling. What exactly are we doing in the storytelling uh, unit and how do we begin writing a story? So as for your informative speeches, you did an excellent job in having a clear thesis statement and hitting all the marks in your uh, informative speech genre, having a clear introduction, body paragraphs, conclusion. How do we take the next step? Well, the first thing you gotta do is stop using any meta language. When someone's listening to a really great speech or a really great story or watching a really great movie, we tend to talk about immersion. The idea that you don't think about the fact that you're watching a movie, you're just interested in the content. The same is true for speeches. You don't want people thinking about the fact that they're sitting down watching a speech. You want them to be focusing entirely on the content being conveyed. However, when you say things like, in this speech and what I'm doing, or in this speech I told you about, um, you call attention to the fact that this is uh, an artificial setting, that you're being put in front of this audience uh, in a context to try and persuade them of something. You don't want them to think about that. You want them to think only about your content. And so you need to stop referencing the speech. Furthermore, uh, your audience already knows this is a speech class. And so when they're listening to your speeches, they listen over and over and over again. Hello, this is the speech. Hello, this is the speech. No more. You're going to start your speeches without a greeting and without referencing the speech form. You're going to start strong, starting with your content. Um, now let's talk a little bit about framing. We're all in our houses, our dorms, different places in the world. I don't want you to have to rearrange your house to make it a set for your speech making, but I need to be able to see that some care was put on what people are seeing through your camera. Let me explain. Some of your speeches were really well framed in your houses. Some of them were a little quirky. A couple of you were talking, um, I imagine, to your phone that was sitting in the table. And so this is the angle I got from a lot of you. And this can be a little distracting. It's not the best way to focus on the speech. What I want you to do is try to get a symmetrical part of your house, some place that isn't doing any like sharp angles like this, because this kind of angle, this very noir angle, um, alludes to the fact that there's things in this side of the house that you can't really see. A symmetrical framing of your camera allows us to focus entirely on what is in the frame and what is at the center of it, which should be you. Give me a level viewpoint so that it seems like we're having a conversation like you would with someone else and not like you would with someone who's a lot shorter than you. This is distracting. This is unintrusive. So what do you do? What if your house's computer is somewhere static and you can really move it around? Or what if your phone doesn't stand out? Well, this is when you have to get creative. I suggest you try and find a place uh, that is just a clear wall if that'll help you like direct the attention of the camera towards you. I suggest you use books and uh, to like build a base for your camera so that you can hold it up to eye level. And also I suggest you record horizontally. If you're recording vertically, uh, you know, it might be fine if people are watching your speech on their phones, but by uploading them to YouTube, you're giving everyone the opportunity to watch your videos on their phone, but also on the computer. And if you're watching a phone recorded vertically on the computer, it looks like you recorded it on the phone. This once again calls attention to the makings of the speech uh, and not to the content. So please record horizontally, 
try and record at eye level and try to frame the background in a way that is either symmetrical or non-intrusive in the speech content. Uh, pure white wall or whatever color it is, honestly, as long as there's no distractions in it. Those are pretty much the two main things that we can do to begin improving uh, the basis that we already have for speech making. Think about the fact that if this was a live speech, you would have a stage that you would have to control. At the beginning of the class, I told you that every part of the speech, that is the words, the delivery, and the context in which it's happening, have to be geared towards the same goal. It has to be coherent. While we don't have a stage and a crowd to play with, we do have the cinematic form, the video that is being shot um, as one of our uh, speech parts. And so you need to be able to use that to convey the message, or at least to not stand in the way of the message. Symmetrical framing, no meta language. That'll help you and your audience focus specifically on the content of your speech. Okay, and this leads me to style. There is no one style that fits all. This is gonna be a problem because I can't really tell you what to do with your hands or what to do with your pacing, your pitch, your choice of words without knowing exactly what you're gonna be talking about. For one, that means that you should probably try and talk to me specifically about what to do before your next speech. On the other hand, it means that we need to think uh, of style as much more of a convention than it is a set of rules. What do I mean by this? Think of what emotions you're trying to convey with your speech or with your story. Um, if things are strict and firm, if you're trying to give the audience uh, a very important, solemn point, maybe about world wars or about environmental destruction, you might want to slow down your pace, lower your pitch, talk in a much more solemn tone, and have stricter hand gestures, things that point about, uh, that suggest the strictness or the hardship of the situation. If on the other hand, you're talking uh, about a light topic, maybe about the lunch your mom packed for you yesterday, you might want to speed up your talking make it seem more colloquial, have gestures that are a little more fluid and less strict so that you can convey a sense of a liberty, of ordinariness to your audience. I suggest that while you're writing your speech on the margins, you try and figure out what emotions you might want to convey with each of the paragraphs or with the thesis statement and the thesis sentences of each of your paragraphs. After you figure out what emotions you want to convey, you might want to do a little brainstorm of what characteristics, what styles, what ideas you think of when you think about that emotion. Something sad might be slow and mundane. Something exciting or climactic might be a lot faster and higher pitched and even uh, erratic. By developing those vocabularies, but by trying to figure out what words and what emotions fit with what parts of your speech, you're able to more decisively choose what emotions you're trying to convey. And this is important. You need to choose the emotions you're trying to convey so that you can practice them and so that you can deliver them. I don't want to see any more uh, deadpan speeches while you are reading your notes and just talking like this throughout the entire conversation because while it is a good narration of your written text, it is not, in fact, a good speech. But it is a good foundation. And so uh, make sure you're pointing, uh, make sure you're singling out what emotions you're trying to convey with each section of your speech and try to act them out. Indulge in the speech form. This is a ridiculous class and it is a ridiculous situation in which we're doing this class. So try not to feel any form of embarrassment or any uh, anything that might be holding you back from just like, being silly with your speech. Truly, indulge in speech making. It's the best way to do it. And it's especially safe now that there's no actual audience and you're just talking to a camera. Indulge in the emotional aspect of your speech, and that is how you're going to be able to link to the actual style that you should be delivering. Finally, story time. So storytelling is very different from what we've been doing. Uh, this is especially true when it comes to the structure of speech. 
that there isn't really an introduction, three body paragraphs, and a conclusion in a story. Um, instead, it feels like a much more fluid, uh, much more linear uh, narrative endeavor. So, how do we begin to write a story? How do we begin to adapt a story? Uh, here's something important for your informative, for your storytelling speech major assignment. You don't have to make up a story if you don't want to. You can, but you don't have to. You can adapt a story that's already out there. Choose a bibliography of someone. Tell the story of a myth, a tale, or something that is connected to your main topic and can help your audience explore a different aspect of it. This doesn't mean that you can just stand in front of the camera and read through someone's Wikipedia entry and call it a story. That's just boring. That's just a restatement of facts. What you gotta do is make sure that your story follows a narrative, a cyclical narrative that we call the hero's journey. I'm gonna send you an email uh, in a bit and that email is gonna have a link to two images. Both of them are the hero's journey but one of them is written in a circle and the other one is written in a strict uh, timeline. The hero's journey is the basic story structure. It is uh, a character which is in the, his ordinary life that gets a call to action, a reason why they need to endeavor in an adventure uh, that might be you know, classical, like Go Fight a Dragon, or might be more uh, psychological, much more uh, quotidian or ordinary. The character then goes into this adventure and is changed by it, gains something from it, and then uh, by the challenges that they have to overcome. And then they return back to the ordinary world uh, and they see that it is now changed by the things that they have learned. That is the three, um, three piece structure of a story told in terms of the hero's journey. The most or the biggest challenge you're gonna have when trying to figure out storytelling is how do I adapt my ideas and narrative uh, chronological timeline into this uh, hero's journey that has different peaks and troughs that allow your audience to be emotionally invested in it, carried by the narrative. We are gonna test that uh, with this week's um, two minute speech. So I want you to do two things. First, I want you to grab the hero's journey that I'm gonna send you. Uh, Check it out, see like the different aspects of it. Uh, each story doesn't have to like hit all of its marks, but it hits like the basic beats of a hero's journey. Um, and I want you to adapt that hero's journey to the story that you heard this week, to um, the really sad story and the really funny story. Both of them fit the hero's journey pretty well um, because they are really well-rounded stories. Then I want you to pick your favorite movie, see how it fits the hero's journey, and then you're gonna tell it to us in two minutes. That is a lot of content for a short period of time. So you're gonna have to pick and choose what the important parts of your favorite movie are, how they fit into the hero's journey narrative, and how you're gonna make it exciting. You need to sell me this movie, make it exciting or sad or funny and ridiculous. You need to convey emotions and fully deliver uh, a specific style that fits in with the story you are telling. Please do not just retell some aspect of your story in front of the camera. Try and make it fun. Try and make it something that someone else would enjoy listening to. Remember, the moment you give a speech for the sake of the assignment and not for the sake of its content, then you've lost your audience. Nobody, nobody enjoys listening to like class presentations for an entire like week of their class. They enjoy it when it becomes interesting, when there's something else happening. But listening to other people's assignments for the sake of the assignments, it's not great. And the thing is, every time you have to give a presentation or tell a story, it you can frame it as a form of assignment. Or you can frame it as an opportunity to do something special with the content you're trying to convey. Indulge in your emotions. Choose your favorite movie. Tell it to us in two minutes, no more than two minutes. I'm gonna start being a lot more strict with uh, time because some of you did speeches that were longer than five minutes. And some of you have been doing speeches that are longer than two minutes and a half. So uh, no more. Two minutes, favorite story. The only rule is that you cannot use Finding Nemo. Uh, every year, at least four people use Finding Nemo and I have heard that story a lot of times. In fact, no Nemo franchise at all, no Finding Dory either. Um, 
please remember to do your readings and watch the videos and turn in questions or comments uh, for both of them by Tuesday night. As of this moment, only nine of you have done comments on the readings and only 12 of you have done comments on the videos and you all should have done it. Uh, don't drop the ball. Let's keep going. Only half the quarter left. You got this.